good morning. Welcome to Ferrari Dubai, where we're kicking off the beginning of the final Formula One Grand Prix race with some awesome Italian coffee and some of the best Italian cars, of which one is ours for the next three days. I have the key here to that giallo, yellow Ferrari SF90. But join me up this line here because we have some serious kit. There's going to be 50 plus, over 50 cars joining us on the drive over to Yas Marina Circuit. And we're going to a destination called Casa Ferrari, which you're going to have to stay along for the ride to understand what that is. It's very cool indeed. But as part of the convoy, and I'm assuming this might be one of the cars leading us, we have a LaFerrari Aperta. Most of the time, these don't even leave garages. So the fact that it's out here being used on the road as part of this convoy is phenomenal. And on top of that, we also have the help from the Dubai police force who are giving us a uh, awesome escort over to Yas Marina. Roll B-roll. <laughs> place keeps delivering dreams. We've got this key for three days during the F1. It's the first time we've driven uh, SF90 on the road, so join us. It's going to be cool. I never thought I'd see the day, and it's technically not fully correct, but that I'd be driving an electric Ferrari. While this isn't an electric Ferrari, we are currently driving the SF90 purely in E-mode. We've got 21 kilometers of range left. It's just a surreal experience. You're so used to starting a Ferrari and before you've even turned a wheel, there's this like theatrical symphony of some sort of V8 or V12. And at the minute, we haven't even turned the engine on. We're just rolling along on the batteries. That's a nice SF90. So this is the difference. It's subtle, but that's an SF90 Assetto Fiorano pack, hence the big, beautiful wing. What a phenomenal moment. And I think it's cool to bear in mind that we're heading to Yas Marina for one of the most exciting conclusions to a F1 championship in forever. So it's a really, really special moment. that satin silver sf90 assetto fiorano pack that looks so good i like that top spec okay so the idea of the support from the dubai police is that we can get a full convoy of ferraris wait for it in three lines across three lanes of the motorway all the way to yaz marina we've each been given a flag where I've got this flag here. So we are the Ferrari Owners Club line and there's a lead car in front of each line. They have their flags out and everyone else with the matching flags corresponding to the lead car gets in a line. And way up front is the Dubai police basically saying, it's okay, these guys aren't making a nuisance of themselves. We're here to do this officially. SF90 is now running an eight speed twin clutch gearbox. And a minute ago, I was just trying to work out how to put it into manual mode, which used to be on a, a more conventional drive select switch on the central transmission tunnel here. But the cool thing about SF90, what it's introduced to the brand is this down here, which is a sort of retro looking hark back to classic Ferraris effectively, which is how you now select your drive. So if I pull this back into N for manual, that's now us in manual mode, jumps out of E mode, and I'm gonna put it into race. The gear shift speed in race mode is unbelievable. Then there's a TDF, which also is unbelievable. Cut me some slack, audience. Cut me some slack. And here's our helpers, the Dubai police. Honestly, we've interacted with these guys now, I don't know, three or four times. And not only are the guys just heroes, but they're so helpful. So, so helpful. I'm not just saying 
this. The acceleration of this is the closest thing to it is a Chiron. It's, it's, it's that insane. Four wheel drive, massive sort of torque fill and hybrid thrust. It's just savage off the line. All right, we're in the environment now. We've got the sound of the F1 cars in the background, but the chances are the chopper and the 812 GTS is probably overriding that. While this thing is ballistically fast, sure as hell doesn't sound like that thing. Guys, there's such an energy about this place now. It's, it's gotta be one. Certainly, okay, I know I was alive with the whole Senna and Prost era, but I was really young. You know, the, the legend of that prevailed, but I was still young. This, this is our generation's equivalent of that. The Verstappen versus Hamilton. It's going to be a serious, serious moment in history for Formula One. And to be here with Ferrari, massive honor. Honestly, this acceleration, are you ready? You can use but a tenth of it. I mean, if you had some open road, it is diaphragm bending in terms of the way this, this thing pushes you back in the seat. Look at this view of Ferraris here. This is quite, quite spectacular. It's like a British racing green, 812 GTS on a tan leather and Alcantara interior. That really works. You know, out here it really works because the sun is showing that theme. Overcast in the UK, that green almost looks black. Yeah, that's a spec. I'm not sure it gets more immersive Ferrari than this. We've got Casa Ferrari over here, which we're gonna take you through. We've got a prancing horse Cavallino and over here is Ferrari world. <laughs> Let's take you in. Ah, that's cool. Look at this, the golf course flags, the putting holes have all got Ferrari flags on. That's a nice touch. So what it looks like we've got here is effectively a sort of Concorde Elegance. We've got F40, F50, Enzo, La Ferrari, La Ferrari, Aperta, three Monza. Oh, no, six Monza, F1 car. This is gonna be great. Ah, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank you. Of course, we are driving back later, so we've got to stick on the water. Uh, this is actually the first time that um, I've been able to share a Casa Ferrari event. So we thought we'd get you on the wide angle because when I'm walking and talking, there's only so much I can show you. And as the timeless statement would suggest, pictures speak louder than words. So let's head in, let's head into this amazing venue. So it is, as you can see, literally held at a villa. Let's go left. Ooh, got some air con here. Wow. Look at this place, so cool. They've got the F1 streaming on the big screen over here. This is the first time that they've displayed this Ferrari art installation. This is a scale model um, of a 488 Pista and the lines represent the airflow over the car. And these are real development models. They're not just an, an art piece. They just result in something that resembles a beautiful piece of art. But this is a real piece of airflow engineering which takes place at the factory back in Italy to really develop the aero sculpture of the car. Very cool indeed. The main thing I'm here for is what's under that sheet. The, the new Ferrari 812 Competizione. It's the first time I'll have seen this in reality. This is great as well. By now, the 488 Challenge Evo video will have gone live. So if you're also interested in that, uh, head back a couple of videos because we take one of these cars, the 488 Challenge Evo, 10 tenths around uh, the new Yas Marina circuit layout. So head over there and check that out. With this weather, with this backdrop, being on a golf course, it feels a little bit like Pebble Beach or Quail. It feels like we're at Monterey Car Week. And particularly with this caliber of cars, I think it's not a stretch to say that a lot of us associate the Dubai car scene with the latest, greatest, the newest cars, which is cool. But how great is it to have the icons here? We have a 512M here, LaFerrari, Enzo, F40, F50. It's so cool to actually see this out here because it's not a scene which I'm overly familiar with in Dubai, but to be here, it's absolutely gorgeous. Dino's cool, but this. So if you watched the uh, Ferrari service center video a couple of weeks ago, you may already be familiar with this car. Now at the time it was under the spotlights of the service center and it looked cool, but out here in real natural sunlight, I'd, I'm not just saying this, this is one of the best specs Monsters that I've ever seen. And I think it probably adds to its uh, specialness 
because it's an SP1 as opposed to an SP2. There's definitely something more rare about it. The um, order split between SP1 and SP2 uh, was uh, sort of disproportionately in favor of SP2. So Monzas are rare enough, but to see the single seaters and this spec, I just love it. The Azuro Dino nose, Giallo stripe. I'm not sure of the actual paint name of the battleship gray, but that's effectively what it looks like. And the seat is like a vintage distressed, rich, deep brown leather. Well, I'm taking it on board, it's quite hard. We're, uh, I'm sure that music's working wonders for this mic. Let's just keep rolling, but um, when you come to events, it's really hard to capture it on camera to sort of make it enjoyable for you. So I guess it's an opportune moment really to ask you what, what kind of things you like to see, know, understand from events like this. Let's not beat around the bush. We're really fortunate to be here and share it with you. It's quite an exclusive thing. What do you want to see so we can improve for you going forward? Let us know. Comments below. Okay, so this is for me what this event is all about. Uh, finally getting up front in reality with the Ferrari 812 Competizione. Um, I'm just blown away. I have to say, and I'll be completely transparent, I wasn't entirely convinced on the car as it was photographed or when it was launched. Perhaps it was the launch photos. And I thought, and it turns out quite rightly, but I will reserve judgment until um, I see it with my own eyes. And sure enough, pictures just, they don't even do this thing 50%. To be able to walk around it and experience its sculpture, it's very aggressive. Being a Grand Tour platform, it's a big car, it's very imposing, long bonnet. The aero sculpture is phenomenal. But for me, a slice of the automotive holy grail is under there, underneath that bonnet. Naturally aspirated Ferrari V12 that revs to 9,500 RPM. I mean, that really, based on A, emotions, and B, the way the world's going with uh, electrification, hybrid, turbocharging, etc. this is one of those, I'm not sure if it's a swan song or not, we won't know yet, but it's certainly one of those moments where they've gone, we really need to push the boat out here and go full send. And just to, to see it, I mean, hopefully one day I'll get to drive one or experience one. Yeah, I just think it's phenomenal. Interestingly, behind me here, you might notice that there's no windscreen, or should I say there's no rear screen. Um, that's part of the aero. It's filled in. That is actually an entirely carbon panel, and it has these interesting aero blades uh, that sit on the back canopy of the car. The diffuser is super aggressive. It's just amazing. And what's great about it is, it's actually, well, wait for me, bear with me when I say this, relatively practical. Because it's based on an 812, uh, you get the benefit of a big boot you can use. You get that space there for bags or custom bags if you want it. And just the interior cabin space. It's a proper Grand Tour platform, turned up to 11. I mean, one of the biggest indicators that this thing means business is right now it's fitted on Michelin Cup 2 R's. And that is such a track bias tire. Imagine what that's like out here. Up to temperature, making that compound of a Cup 2 R work. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. One day, I'm gonna work really, really hard. One day, I would really, really like one of these as a keeper forever in the garage. Let's see what we can do. As always, thank you so much for watching. We shall see you next time. Ciao.